Hello and welcome to another episode of Open Studio. I'm your host, Martina Flor, and in this solo episode, I would like to speak to you about income streams. And when I speak about income streams, I'm referring specifically to all of the things that you could do to make an income with your art and with your work as a lettering artist or illustrator. So there are several reasons why you would choose to go solo with your business, right? Some, some artists choose or decide to go solo because they want to have more decision on which projects they take on, which projects they decline. Some artists, you know, are looking for more freedom and flexibility in their lives and um, decision making around when do they take holidays or when do they make a pause or take a break. Um, so there are several reasons why you may choose to um, go solo with your business. But one of the reasons has to do with becoming your own boss and with having a say on everything you do around your business. I always say that, you know, building a business is kind of like your baby and you're building something that has your imprint, that carries your vision, that um, aligns with your value. So you are the boss of this project. You are the leader of this project. And what I see often um, artists doing is that they, they give up their day job, they start their own business and they change the image of an overpowering boss that they used to have in their day job with the image of a client. And they start responding to their um, timetables and their calendars and they start, you know, there's a lot of frustration because um, once an assignment is finished, they see themselves seeking for the same, for the next assignment. And they feel that they are in this wheel of like, okay, I, I have a job. I finished the job. I have nothing left. Now I'm again, um, you know, I, I need to start over again with looking for another client and finding another project and, um, yeah, and onboarding a new, a whole new project all over again. Right. So this is something that happens over and over again that, you know, artists or designers, they start their own business and they change the overpowering uh, image of a boss or the boss they used to have with the image of a client. And this is because also they have for a long time responded to someone else's um, to someone else's expectations and the the you know, the, the responsibility of uh, deciding what's next was in someone else's hands. And this is totally understandable. Now that you're starting your own business, you need to start uh, dictating these things. You need to start creating your own plan. And this is where um, there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of, um, yeah, try to, you know, there's a lot of trying to figure out how you, um, how you become the, you know, the artist, the independent artist, but also the administrator of your own project or of your own business, right? So why are income streams important? And why am I today dedicating this podcast episode to speak about income streams? Because income streams or I've seen in my own experience and also through speaking to different artists in my show that income streams are a way of becoming independent from client work. And I've seen that over and over again with, um, with many of the artists that I have interviewed in this show that they have built their creative business around not just client work, but a lot of different income streams. Some of them have several income streams. For instance, Lisa Condom, who was in a previous episode, she has, I think, over 10 income streams. She writes books and she has an online shop and she uh, teaches online classes. She has a world of income streams, right? Um, and some people have just 
two income streams. For instance, um, F. Dodd has a very um, successful online shop and he also creates work for clients. Um, Eric Marinovich, for instance, he creates work for clients, but also he has started his own type foundry selling digital products. So today we will we'll touch on different um, possible income streams that you can create for your own business. But to start, I want to speak a little bit about the benefits or why you would want to create income streams for your own creative business. Um, first, income streams are a way of, of sustaining yourself, making an income uh, without depending on client work, without having the need of seeking or pursuing or chasing the next client project to make a living, right? Um, so that is already a great benefit. The fact that you can create some sort of passive income for yourself. You can count on that income coming in no matter what, um, every single month, every single week, right? And when I speak about passive income, of course, there's room for misinterpretation. When I speak about passive income, it doesn't mean that it won't require any work from you. But when you when you talk about creating different income streams, you talk about creating products, things that are, you know, you create them once and they create recurrent income. So most of the income streams that we will touch on today and that I have discussed with uh, in previous episodes with uh, other artists have to do with that scheme where you create a product, you put it out there and it create recurring income. Of course, you need to continue promoting it. Of course, you can or you need to continue improving that product. But um, the the creation process is very different from client work where you work very intensively for um for creating that product, you put it out there, and then it's about keeping that product running um, so that you can have an income from that specific product or service that you put out there, right? So before I get into the different income streams that you could have in your business, the, as I said before, the benefits of having income streams as a an artist is first to sustain yourself so that you're not solely dependent on client work and the number two is to discover new aspects of your creative profile that are differential and when i see when i when i speak about discovering aspects of your creative profile is that oftentimes as artists we believe that client work is the only thing you can do and i feel that is so restrictive in terms of like enabling yourself to see all the possibilities you have as an artist we often see ourselves or we picture ourselves sitting on the desk at a desk um, creating the art whereas when you start thinking of income streams you can start seeing yourself um, or looking at yourself as someone that has various skills or various talents beyond the one of creating the artwork, right? Um, so I feel that, and I said this in previous episodes, that starting your own business or creating a business around your skills also allows you to create a container for exploring your creativity and for exploring the several things you can do with that thing you're really good at, right? So I think that opening up your mind to the different income streams that you can do as an artist also allows you to discover and, um, and you know, look at the different things, at the different skills that you have that are currently overpowered with that one great skill that you have, which is your talent as a as an artist or as a, a an illustrator, right? So um, there is def a lot of things that you can do beyond your art and thinking of income streams or exploring different income streams is a very good way 
of discovering those talents. And I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on a framework to discover those skills and talents um, right at the end of this episode. But for now, what I wanted to talk about shortly is what what are the benefits? Why why would you want to start thinking about different income streams for your business? And I think there's two reasons. The one of sustaining yourself beyond client work is a very strong one. Um, and the second one, discovering aspects of um, your skill set that you didn't know you had um, is also a very powerful one. Um, so let's dive into the different income streams or the possible income streams that you could be exploring. The first one that comes to mind, and I guess that as soon as I was speaking about income streams um, on this episode, on in the beginning of this episode, you were already thinking about an online shop. And this is a very classical one among artists starting an online shop. Um, and, you know, when I speak about an online shop, it's about having um, and a store that sells your products. And these products may be digital or physical. Uh, many artists out there start a, um, a, a store of physical products, right? So they sell prints. So prints is a very classical one because the, the production costs are very low um, and you can um, you can at the same time showcase your talents right so you're creating a product that is a direct um, response or direct result of the art that you create um, so the you know, the having a, an, an online shop with prints is the very classical um, or the, the format that many artists out there choose. However, you can go beyond that and you can, you know, start thinking of different products in for which your art could be useful or could be um, an asset or a plus, right? So for instance, Lisa Condom, who was all in, in, in one of our previous episodes, she has a thriving online shop. And I think that a big part of her income is coming from her online shop. She even has a now an employee that is um, dedicated to running the online shop. And when you visit her website, uh, her online shop is front and center and it's the first thing you find uh, when you try to find something about Lisa Condom. So she has developed an online shop of physical products um, that has a wide variety of items. She sells not only online, print, online um, sorry, she sells not only prints, but also um, merchandising mugs, um, um, textiles, um, she has this, uh, um, a line of uh, iPhone cases and cases of every kind. Um, so not only she has created the products and put them to on sale on her um, on her online shop, but she has also um, created collaboration collaborations with different brands. So brands take over production, she creates the art for those products and they collaborate in putting that line of products out there. Um, so online shops is a, you know, or starting your own online shop is a very good way of creating an income stream for yourself and for your business. Of course, there's, um, there's complexity to creating an online shop, and I can say this because I had an online shop myself, um, and I know that um, it may seem very, um, in the very beginning, it may seem very easy to just say, okay, I create this product and I put it out there and I sell it, but there's a lot of work involved in first producing the actual product, investing money into producing that product, uh, promoting the product, shipping the product. So there's a lot of things that are not visible when you start an online shop, which of course you need to explore when you want to start an online shop. Um, but as I said before, an online shop doesn't mean necessarily that you need to have 
a shop that is um, loaded with a huge variety of products. You can start an online shop just selling prints and just focusing on one specific product. And when I look back to the way I started my own online shop, um, I wish I would have started smaller. I wish I would have started with just one item and see how that went and not just trying to create a whole line of products without even knowing what my audience wanted, right? So online shop, there's several ways in which you can start an online shop. Um, and when you think of an online shop, you don't necessarily need to think of a huge thing full of products um, and full of different items, you can just focus on one thing, right? On selling one specific thing. Um, as I mentioned before, collapse could be also a potential, um, a potential income stream for you. And when I speak about collapse, I am referring specifically to partnering with someone else that has a different skill or has a different business than mine where um, where you as an artist you provide the art you provide the creativity and they provide the know-how oftentimes the the investment and the production and together you um you launch a new product right so for instance um a thought who was in one of the previous episodes he created a collaboration with a um, card collection company, if I remember correctly, and he was creating these custom cards for this company. They were producing the cards and they were selling the cards. Um, so he was providing the art and the production or the, the um, card collection company was producing the cards, putting them on the market, selling them, and he was getting a certain um, income from that collaboration, right? So whenever, whenever you think about creating an income stream from creating products, you don't necessarily need to create the products yourself. And I think this is really liberating. And I wish someone had told me this in the very beginning when I started my shop, because um, I think oftentimes when you think of like, hey, I want to create products with my art, um, you, you think, or you approach the project as something that, um, that you need to do yourself and you need to like cover the costs yourself, do the production yourself. And oftentimes finding people, at least in the very beginning, finding people that will cover a certain part of the process, um, and help you put that product out there. Uh, without having, without the need of you taking care of everything can be very liberating and can really um, allow you to actually put that product out there. So um, collabs are a great way of uh, creating an income stream. Um, another thing that you could do as an income stream is creating digital products, right? Um, so in one of the previous episodes, um, Eric Marinovich was, who is a lettering artist and type designer, he recently started his own type foundry where he offers digital products, which are fonts, essentially their own fonts. Um, he's, he's offering his own fonts through his uh, digital type foundry and he is creating an additional income stream, passive income stream for his own business, right? Um, so digital products is another, I would say like another layer of income streams. So oftentimes when we think of creating products with our art, we think of creating physical products. We would love to see our art printed on a uh, on a paper print, or we would, love, we would love to see our art printed on a, I don't know, on a textile or um, on a certain product or on a, on a bag, right? But digital products can take a lot of the work out of putting a product out there. And because you are not creating a physical product, uh, which is already, you know, 
already taken a lot of the work of putting a physical product out there in the world, the printing, the you know manufacturing, the the inventory, the shipping, right? So with a digital product, you have you create the product in your computer and you can put it out there right away, right? Um, and you can also use marketplaces that actually offer your product, right? So uh, you don't need to create your own um, online shop, but you can benefit from using the audience of already established marketplaces, right? So this is also something to consider whenever you're trying to put a product out there or to uh, commercialize something that you have created is instead of starting your own online shop or your own thing on your own platform, sometimes it can be easier or it can be beneficial for you to use platforms that are already available because not only you can benefit from their, um, their audience, but also you can um, get rid of a lot of a lot of the friction that it has to uh, start your own online shop, you know, because it's not about starting creating the product itself, no matter if it's physical or digital. Um, it's not only about creating the product itself, but also about creating the platform, creating the, the you know, the, the actual website where you will sell the things, um, you know, connecting the payment methods and all of this stuff that actually is solved when you use someone else's platform. Of course, the the you know the the, the income or the the cut that you will get from those sales will be um, considerably less because you know the platform will receive a percentage of your sales, right? But there's already a lot of friction that is um, that is out of the way when you use someone else's platform, right? And with this, I don't mean that you necessarily need to, that one thing is better than the other one, that using your own platform is worse or better than using someone else's platform or an already existing platform. What I mean is that what I'm trying to open up your mind here is to possibilities to sort of, you know, remove the friction to whatever you want to do, because oftentimes, whatever is holding us back from trying something out or trying a new income stream or trying to sell a product that we created is those things. It's like, oh, I'm not going to sell this brush that I created because I don't have an online shop yet and I need to connect the payment method and I need to figure out how do I create that, how do I integrate that with my own website? And then suddenly you have the product, you have the thing, you could be already selling it, but, um, you know, you have so many buts and steps in between that um, you don't really make it happen. So I'm trying to kind of open up your mind to different possibilities in which you can um, you can make it happen, right? So I mentioned already online shop collaborations to create products, um, creating digital products and selling them on your own platform or someone else's platform. Um, online classes can also be an income stream. And with online classes, you basically are creating a digital product. You are creating a, you know, video content or whatever content you are putting out there in your um, in your online class, but you're creating a content that gives someone a service or is teaching something, right? And you create it once, you you record the lessons once, and you um, you put it out there, and the work comes then afterwards to bring um, audience or you know people into your class, and this happens actually with everything else that I was talking about just now, um, you will, you know, after you create a product, there will be work coming your way in terms of like bringing people or, you know, putting this in front of people, right? Bringing leads into your shop, bringing customers into your, um, your online classes or bringing students into your online classes, right? So you, um, this is why I, I mentioned in the beginning that you know we are trying to create income uh, income streams so that we can create passive income 
But you know, the term passive is actually not representative of the actual work you have to put into sustaining or creating and sustaining an income stream. So have that into account that once you create the product, you will need to bring um, people in or, you know, put this product in front of people's eyes, right? So online classes, you could be um, teaching whatever you're great at, you could be teaching this to other people, right? So is a digital product that um, consists of recordings or videos that you, um, you offer to other people, right? Another income stream or possible income stream, and this is the last one I'm gonna touch on, although there's a myriad of ways in which you can make income with your art, is speaking, right? Um, so you can, if you have the skill of communicating with people and communicating concepts and are train yourself into um, public speaking, this could become an income stream for you. And I know it is for me. Um, and, um, you know, it's something that I train myself into and definitely was a combination of uh, different things that I, or different skills that I had and also a vision that I had for myself. So um, uh, speaking is not something that necessarily every artist decides to do, um, but if you feel that you have, um, you know, something to say or a mission or something to communicate to people um, and you have the skill or you want to develop the skill of communicating that in a compelling way, then speaking could be a very profitable way to have an additional income stream um, for your business, right? So as I said, there is a myriad of ways in which you can make an income with whatever you do. Um, and as you can see, I listed five or six ways in which beyond client work, you could be making an income with your art, right? And this is something that was very transformative for my own business as a lettering artist. Um, and I've seen it also um, as a constant um, in all the artists that I have interviewed in this show. Uh, so it seems to be um, really something that many artists are pursuing or those successful artists that are living from their art are pursuing. And I can speak for myself that having additional income streams really allow me to have flexibility, not only in, in, in my work or in, in my timetable or in my calendar, but also to escape this, this circle of like, you know, having the job, finishing the job, being back to zero, looking for another job, right? So looking for another client assignment. And this is why during my coaching program for lettering artists and illustrators, I, we work um, intensively into developing different income streams, right? There's in fact a specific uh, bonus training that we offer together with the coaching program that is called Income Streams for Freedom, which has to do with this concept of, you know, opening your minds to all the different possibilities that you have as an artist. And I think that this is, you know, this training is one of the most transformative ones in terms of like, I think and I believe that you know, as an artist, you can do so many things. And I think that um, what the students experience through this training or after this training is that, hey, look at all the things that I can do. You know, I hadn't, you know, before taking uh, this training, I hadn't thought of like all the things that I could potentially do with what I do and with my skills, right? And also the training provides them with, um, tools and different uh, places or different uh, strategies they could use to launch and um, and create these income streams, right? So really during this, this um, specific training, we go through the different income streams or the 
some of the most common income streams that you could create as an artist and how you can start thinking about them, how you can structure um, the project, how you can launch it, uh, which ways of monetizing you have. Um, so this is, I think this bonus training is actually one of the most transformative one, ones within the coaching program because um, after this training, all of the students, all of the members start thinking about, okay, what, you know, which are the things I could do with what I do, right? Um, which are the things I could do with my talents? Which other experiences that I had before that I thought they were unrelated uh, to what I do right now, which other experiences can I use for my business today, right? And um, I really like this, this week in which we go through this income um, income streams uh, for freedom training because after that our uh, community chat is on fire everyone is like brainstorming and thinking and many of our members launch online classes after um, the um, the the program because of this training many of them created a new income stream or started a new income stream besides um, client work um, after this training so i feel this is one of the most transformative ones and this is why i'm also creating this specific podcast uh, solo episode about income streams because I personally wish someone had told me that when I started my own business and someone would have brought this concept to me when I started, right? Um, which was, a hey, you don't need to be chasing the next client over and over. You could also, on the side, start these other income streams or start these other projects that it could eventually become um, a way of making an income with your skills, right? So before we go, I want to tell you a, or share with you a framework that I use to start creating uh, or to start thinking about income streams and how you can start thinking today after this episode, um, how you can start thinking about income streams for your own business. And I always speak about, um, like in a nutshell, my framework has to do with combining a skill that you have um, with your craft. And when, when I speak a skill that you have, I'm speaking about any skill and even skills that you feel that are unrelated. Skills that you have gained through previous experiences in your in your other uh, jobs or experiences that you have gone through uh, while studying, um, any experience that you have gone through um, can really um, be helpful in this stage of your career, right? So I always say combine a skill that you have or you have acquired with the craft that you are focused on right now so with the thing that you're doing right now so for instance just to give you an example in my case i took acting classes for four years when i was 18 so from 18 to 22 years old i was going to acting classes right and the things that i learned during that experience are things that i still use nowadays to teach my students in my online programs for hand lettering and to, um, to also to conduct our coaching uh, sessions with, um, with, my member, with the members of my group coaching program, Live Now. Um, so the, the skills that I learned during those acting classes are things that I use nowadays um, in my uh, online classes or in my online trainings, right? So body language, um, emotional connection uh, is or emotional skills are things that I use nowadays, things that I learn during those acting classes when I was 18. I use them nowadays in during the trainings, right? Um, so body, body language, um, expressing through um, you know, to, through gestures, 
These are all things that I trained back then and that I use nowadays on my online trainings and that I use for a long time as well uh, or help me a big time through all of the speaking engagements that I have had throughout the years, right? So already having that skill with me, already being confident with my body, the way I, I move my hands, the way I didn't overdo it, um, you know, with my body language, the way I could express things with my face was very, um, was a plus when I started, um, doing speaking engagements, right? So there was a learning curve that I didn't have to go through um, in that sense. I already had that skill and I could use it for my speaking engagement. So that, what I, what I want to, to um, show you with this is that things that you may think that are unrelated to what you do right now may be very essential skills for you to do something else within your craft, right? So combining those skills that you gain at some point with whatever you do right now may um, give you an idea for a possible income stream. So in my case, it was, I have skills to talk to people, I have skills to communicate and to, um, you know, to talk to people in an engaging way. And I combined that with what I was doing, lettering, and I created an, an additional income stream, which was, you know, online classes, which was speaking, all of things that had to do with lettering, but in combination with talking to people, communicating stuff, um, communicating concepts, engaging people with what I was saying, right? So again, think of something or a skill that you have or you have acquired throughout time, no matter how unrelated it is to what you're doing right now, combine that with your craft and think or see what you can come up with which are the things that will come easy to you um, by combining that skill with the craft that you're focused on now. So I hope this episode about income streams was useful. I hope you found a lot of value and that you can already start thinking about these income streams. I want to also mention that I'm gonna um, open registrations for my next coaching program for lettering artists and illustrators in June, next June. So, um, the, you know, the registration will go for, um, less than a week and we are taking in, um, students, a selected amount of students or a limited amount of students or members each time. So if you're interested in, um, you know, in accelerating your process with your business and having guidance and a community support, um, I would recommend you to sign up for the waiting list. Those that are on the waiting list have priority access to the program. Um, as I said, we take a limited amount of members. So if you're interested, you will want to be on the waiting list. You can sign up uh, to the waiting list on um, maketheleapnow.com and just enter your email and we will let you know when registrations are open. I'm going to add the link to the waiting list on the show notes so that you can find it. Again, the website is maketheleapnow.com and you can sign up for the waiting list. There's a sign up form right at the top um, and we will let you know as soon as registrations are open. So I hope I will, if I don't see you there, I hope this episode was interesting for you and already gave you some hints on how you can start thinking about income streams for your own creative business. So this is it. I hope you loved this episode. You can find me, the host of the show, on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have a question or comments, go to martinaflor.com slash podcast, where you can see previous episodes, find show notes, and send voice memos with your comments and questions. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube. Just go to martinaflor.com slash YouTube to find them. You can, of course, listen to all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. If you loved 
this episode, subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave us a review, it will help others find us. Thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Martina Flores Open Studio. Bye-bye.